Good morning, everyone. I hope we're all doing all right. Um, if not physically, then I hope emotionally and spiritually we're surviving and going through this weird time together. Um, we're continuing our series on the different seasons of the soul, and actually we're concluding um, this morning. And strangely enough, uh, this morning's title is Praise Him Through the Fog. And uh, as we come to this uh, end of the series, it is weird that we are actually in a particular season of the soul without a shadow of a doubt. And so uh, the psalm we're going to draw on this morning is Psalm 23. Psalm 23. And I know many of you who are regular in the church here would um, know this psalm. Let me tell you something. I think Psalm 23 is like the Lord's Prayer. It's something that we need to own. We need to get hold of this language because Psalm 23 is about all the different cycles of life and how we find God within them. So it is the psalm to use on such an occasion and it is the psalm to use on many occasions. So we need to own it. And I say it's like the Lord's Prayer because the Lord's Prayer, we've sort of memorised, we've sort of got it up here, haven't we, about our Father in heaven and holy is his name and his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, etc, etc. And so I'm going to try, uh, I've got my Bible open in front of me here, but I'm going to try and uh, give you Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd and therefore I will lack nothing. He encourages me into the quiet places to reflect. Green pastures, cool streams and there in those places he restores my soul. He rewires my brain. He works through my thoughts, my decisions, my will. He refreshes my thinking. He shows me his paths and he encourages me to walk within them. Now, even if I walk through the darkest of valleys, I will not fear anything because my God is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. All the resources of heaven are made available to me. <laughs> yeah, even in a time of conflict, even in front of my enemies, even when the pestilence is banging on the door, he says, I've done dinner. He encourages me to sit and there he pours his presence glug, 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 into me until I overflow. <laughs> I've got two new companions. Goodness and unfailing love. And they follow me around all the time. It's as if I'm living in the very house of God hour by hour. I love Psalm 23. I do. I really, really do. Now, at the beginning of this series, Jane Lewis was speaking, and she said that the Psalms were written reflectively. They aren't written at the time, but they're written after the event. It's great to have hindsight, isn't it? And Psalm 23 is this. Psalm 23 is not about linear stages in our lives okay it's not about act one oh we're by the quiet waters we're hanging out with the shepherd guy act two dun 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 it's the dark valley Ooh. but act three hey we're overflowing with his goodness and unfailing love it's not that for david yes there were times when he knew what it was to sit by a quiet stream. There were times when he could just reflect with God. There were times when people were out to pursue him and to find him and to kill him. And there were times clearly in his writings when he was just overcome. 
by the presence of God. I love the phrase Charles Wesley wrote. I'm glad he wrote it. I'm glad he wrote it back in the 18th century and not in the Bible. Lost in wonder, love and praise. I just think it's great that we can be in that place centuries, centuries, centuries after the actual events. We can still get lost in wonder, love and praise. So there are these three elements to the psalm. The shepherd, pastoral uh, movement, you know, Beethoven's number six. Yeah, it's, it's the pastoral movement. Then it's the, dum -dum -dum -dum, the dark valley. Then it's the overflowing, even in the presence of hostility, overwhelmed. His goodness is running after, it's running after me, an unfailing love. And living in his house and living in his presence. And what David does is he takes those experiences which were linear, you know, one after the other, but he wraps them up in this brilliant piece of theology and say, look, here's a gift to you. You don't have to learn it the hard way. You can have this all the time. That though somewhere in your life there may be a dark valley, and let's be honest, we're in a season of the soul. We're going through a difficult time. We're in lockdown. We're going through a valley. But we don't have to sit here and wait for Act 3. We can take those experiences with us. That's key, folks. Okay? Where was I? I'm confused. The pastoral stuff, the reflection, and the overwhelming stuff, the worship. We take both of those, handfuls of them, and carry them into the valley. They're the rocks we build upon. This is not a season for closing your eyes and denying what's happening. I mean, and closing all the doors and closing the curtains as well. This is, we're not going to get through this valley with denial. This is not a time for grabbing some inappropriate scripture and say, God's my shield and he's going to protect me. That's, I, I don't believe that. You know, Paul went through sufferings. People still go through sufferings. Okay, there's a virus. People get viruses all the time. This is a crazy new one and I'm not, I'm not making light of it, but you know, there are people battling with all sorts of things in their lives, physically, mentally and spiritually, God bless them. This is about the words of Jesus. This is about the parable of the builders. We either build on a rock or we build on sand. But both builders encountered the same storm. Okay, folks, we are all encountering the same storm. We are all encountering the same dark valley. It's what are you taking into that valley? Are you taking in the disciplines of being able to rest with Father God and just to reflect on his righteousness and to look again at some of the plans and the things we're trying to do and realign them with his perfect, good, perfect and pleasing will. Are we taking into the valley the ability to draw on God's unfailing love, his goodness, his mercy, his, his, his never-ending presence, to become overwhelmed? Lost in wonder, love and rest. Can we take that into the darkest moments? Can we build with these Christian disciplines in our lives and get through the other side? Folks, this is really important. We've never been in a situation like this before. This is, this is, this, this is new. This is new. Uh, my mother, she, she lives in a home. It's a gorgeous home, so you know, don't feel too bad. And she moved in. To be honest, me and my brother weren't that happy. I mean, she's very close to my sister. 
And so um, my, my sister's really thrilled because she can access the grandchildren, the great grandchildren. But me and my brother weren't that pleased. We were quite upset that she was moving into an old people's home or whatever. But then we saw the place and my brother said, I wouldn't mind moving in here myself. So she's in lockdown. So they've been trying to tell her that she's got to have her meals in her own home, in her own room. And she can't go into the communal areas and all the rest of it. And her comment was, oh my goodness, it wasn't this bad during the war. So she's lived through some difficult times. We're living through an extraordinary time. And have we built our lives on the rock? It's still time to relocate. It's still time to realign ourselves with the Father who loves us unconditionally, who wants to give good things to us, who wants to give us a sense of peace, Maybe not understanding, it's like a choice. His peace is beyond understanding. You can either have the understanding or you can have the peace that goes way beyond that. I'll go for the peace anytime. Yeah. Are we gonna grow with God? Now, how do we do this practically? How, how, you know, find your favorite chair. Go, if you can still leave the house, if you're not in lockdown isolation, but you can still have your exercise once a day, you know, if you're allowed. Boris says, the government says, you can go out for a walk, but keep away from other people. You know, can you find that open space or that, that place? But we need to draw on the pastoral narrative of Psalm 23 and the overwhelming presence of God of Psalm 23 and take them into the valley. Now I'm going to put on Facebook, I don't know if I can, so I haven't tried this yet, but um, I'm hoping to put a link. It's just a PDF file. It's a single side of A4. So anyone with a printer can just print this out, fold it very cleverly into ooh, a card. And I called this the four R's of reflection. And basically it's just a simple tool. I mean, it's, it's embarrassingly simple and so embarrassingly simple, I'll admit that I have, it's not all my ideas. I have nicked some of them from other people. But it's a simple tool to get you to sit down with a cup of tea or whatever it is and just reflect on the day, celebrate the good bits, say sorry and rethink through the bits that didn't go so well, and to refresh yourself with the presence of God ready for the next day. And um, do you know what? It's how God wanted it to be. <laughs> you know, Adam's there in the garden and in the cool of the evening, God comes along and wants to talk to us. I love that. That's how God planned to build us and mature us, was for us to live life, experience life, and then to reflect on it at the end of the day with him. But we, talk, we took the shortcut, didn't we? We said, oh, that bit of fruit, that gives us all the knowledge and all the or everything we need to know about good and bad, hey, that'll make us like God. You know, it's like a, a fast track system. Did not work, did not work. But anyway, we've got time for that. I'm getting distracted. Download your four hours of reflection and take some time out. I'm serious about this, guys, because we're fragile. If anything, in these last few weeks, we've learned that. We have learned that we are physically fragile. A tiny, tiny virus that we can't see with the naked eye has brought the 21st century to a standstill. That's how fragile we are. We already knew that in here, this most complicated computer on the planet, it misfires at times and, and some of us struggle. We struggle you know, severely with issues. We're fragile. And we need to find the simplest of tools or whatever works for you to take the goodness of God and his unfailing love into the darkest valley. So we will fear no evil and his rod and his staff will comfort us. The resources of heaven are with us. Amen. I'm going to pray. Just a short prayer. Just to stay where you are. And I'm going to pray. Father God, 
I ask that you would come by your Holy Spirit into every home that is tuned into this channel right now. That you would come in a tangible way, that there'd just be a sense of your peace. There may even be, you may even be able to pick up his aroma, the aroma of the victorious Christ. Saying, do not be afraid. I am with you until the ends of everything. And then I'll be with you again for all eternity. Father God, allow our hearts, our minds, body, soul and spirit to connect with you, to find your peace, to find your rest, to be restored, to be filled, to be filled, to overflow. Bless you all, wash your hands, stay safe.